So it's kind of a joint effort on the OER and low cost labeling because Christy Fierro had recently joined our team at Olympic College and up um, to kind of develop the guidelines. And um, I worked with my library faculty on a library guide. Um, they put it into a canvas shell, but then we decided the library guide was easier to update. Um, so it was, and Christy Fierro at the time was an, our first instructional designer down in our center for, I think they were still teaching and learning at that point, faculty professional development and the library. The two of us were kind of joined together to roll out implementation. Between the resources that were provided by SBCTC and then the work that TCC had done around kind of parsing it out for faculty, we just used their that work um, at Olympic College line. Um, we also worked with the course schedulers. So Christy and I did a training for the course schedulers uh, around what these meant, um, helped address their questions. Um, and as new course schedulers were onboarded, um, they often ended up connected to me um, through like admin assistants or deans to kind of go over the the information for a restructure on campus. And so the course schedulers that lived in the divisions are actually being pulled out to one unit in instruction. So um, I'm intending for Caroline and I to meet with the course schedulers again. We also have some new people um, who haven't heard the word, so to speak. And kind of talk to them so they understand. But I would say one of our biggest challenges in that as well is making sure faculty understand because the course schedulers are just entering what faculty say. Yeah. And so we need we're gonna kind of wrap back around. Caroline's already done some kind of talking training on that, but um, you know, we're gonna we'll kind of use a multi-pronged approach to kind of get us actually. Um, so our records ho hopefully are a little more accurate. With faculty, um, when I first got to OC um, with Erica's help and guidance, I ended up making a list of all the faculty who um, taught OER courses or courses that we had labeled as OER in the catalog. Um, and I started just by sending, you know, introduction emails like, hey, this is me, I'm new. If you need anything from the library, um, I'm obviously here to help. But also if you have questions about OER, if there's a way that, you know, you could be supported in those efforts, I am completely would love to help you find uh, OER and adopt existing or maybe adapt. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of, what I did, um, I wouldn't say I had a great success rate on that just because it was so many faculty. So only, you know, a handful probably responded. But from that group, uh, I did get my name out there and then just going, um, getting really involved in other campus um, events and committees. I uh, eventually started kind of making headway with some of the big OER adopters, I guess, which um, is actually some really good advice I got from Jennifer at Tacoma Community College, because she basically told me really early, don't waste time trying to, you know, sell yourself or sell OER and persuade the whole world to do it. She was like, just get the people who are already excited and already making efforts, um, get involved with them. So it was so good to hear that at the start. I think about that all the time. If I had spent the past like 18 months just trying to like convince person after person instead of just getting to be around people who are already excited and just want to make it easier. I have a shared governance structure at OC um, and so there's a endless committees it seems like but um, going to faculty senate meetings um, every time has been a big deal just because anywhere where there's just like faculty kind of having a conversation about how to improve instruction or maybe they're just talking about like the problems they're seeing currently. Um, so the I, the two big ones that, and I only joined Learning Council this past year, but I would say the going to the faculty Senate meetings from the start has been really helpful. And whenever someone does bring up OER 
or even just low cost alternatives to textbooks, I've been able to kind of mentally go, oh, hey, that's so and so they teach this and send them an email after the meeting um, so that they aren't like kind of stumbling around the campus like, where do I go for this? One of the things we've been, we were, I was able to do is I was on, um, you know, coming out of achieving the dream, we had an equity team and I was on that group. And in the equity team strategic plan, we actually put OER in the strategic plan. We could tag OER into strategy. We did. Planning priority. I don't know where it's, we're working on a new strategic plan right now for the entire college. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know exactly where it's going to live, but I do know like our vice president of instruction, um, who also worked for the Center for Learning Innovation or Center for Teaching and Learning, they've changed names. Um, and our president are very much OER advocates. Um, and so it, it comes up a lot in conversation. And we actually had, I had an instructional my instructional team, the other deans and associate deans had a retreat and OER was a big topic of conversation that uh, at least uh, understand the culture of your campus. Um, because, you know, will a top-down approach work? Do you need to have that kind of cross-functional, cross area, cross classification model so that people, you have, you know, staff talking to staff and you have faculty talking to faculty, you know, um, the dean can evangelize, but there again, that feels like a top down. So I think yeah. it's important to have the, have those conversations happening at the appropriate levels um, and in the appropriate places. Like now we have a strategic enrollment management group, which we didn't have before. Um, and so, you know, identifying who, where are those key places to have the conversation. And like I said, we got OER and, and affordable course materials into our equity plan. And it's still living in our existing version of the equity plan, the last one I saw. And so also tying it to, um, you know, specific plans or strategies or so I think I think it's a multi-layered approach. How many places can you get the conversation happening? Can you um, identify it as an important need for your students and a priority for your college?